Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAndLive.com. Hey, today we're going to measure the impedance, not of this resistor, we've done that one. So now we're going to do of this Paradigm speaker. It's a CC360, I think it is. Anyway, I'll put the model number right here. But it's about 10 years old, and when it was, um, it was meant for a center channel, uh, home theater system, and it was kind of high-end dish. It's about a $500 speaker back in the day, and I think it had some really great reviews. Uh, so we're gonna do, we're gonna measure the impedance that. It's supposed to be eight ohms. This is four ohms. I've got a load resistor, eight ohms. Last video I did these resistors that I use for amplifier testing. So this time we're gonna do this guy, all right? And we're gonna go through it pretty quick because I've already shown how to do a lot of this setup for this and explained how this um, setup works. So. If you want, go look at the other video I did just prior to this on measuring um, how inductive or non-inductive is my 8 ohm resistor load. Something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> I'll put the title of the movie. I'll put the title of the video down here. Okay. Uh, hey, let's go do it. Okay, and just going over the setup. This is pretty simple on this one. All we're doing is measuring the speaker. We're using this little resistor down here for the 20 ohm uh, reference our calibration shot then this wire here goes to our speaker red and black wire and our scope probe here is connected to here and here the red and black and the generator from the scope this coaxial connector is going through the current probe and into the, the uh, speaker so we're measuring the current with the Hantech CC65 in the times 10 position 1 millivolt per 10 milliamp the scope probe is in its time to 10 position down here, and that's it. Okay, All right, so just a quick explanation of the setup. Um, I have a longer explanation of how I set this up for these impedance testing on my previous video, the links below. It's about the inductance of my resistive load or the non inductance. <laughs> I wanted to see how inductive they were, they're supposed to be non inductive. Okay, so. For this one, we got the voltage probe, one times one times ten probe coming to channel one. It's in the times ten position. Channel two has a current probe. It's in the times ten. It's one millivolt per ten milliamp. The Hantec current probe. It says CC65. In the setup of this, we have the input on channel two and the output on channel one. So the way this does this plot, this gain plot here in blue is it's output over input, so voltage over current gives ohms, and it actually gives in dB here in the gain scale, so we have to divide that by 20 and take the anti-log to get the ohms, this, and then this is um, a picture of my 4 ohm resistor. We're going to do a 20 ohm to show, you know, for our kind of calibrate before you do the speaker, and the current probe puts a little bit of this and a little bit of this on, on the thing. It's not quite flat in phase, but we're, we'll see that in a moment. And this is how many points I'm going to take it. This is set for 10. I'll set. I'll change it to 15 to get a few more points. I could go all the way up to 90 to get a little more res, uh, resolution. Okay. Now, by the way, this is the apps menu on the scope. When I go to application up here, here if I quit this real fast, it comes up with this application menu. And I just go here and I select that, and then I have this. So that's just a feature of this GWN stack. It's really cool. It's meant for doing body plots, and we can do impedance measurements with it. Okay, so let's do our 20 ohm. Okay, so I'm going to hit this run button, but before I do, what we're going to expect to see on this gain is about 13 dB uh, for the 4 ohm speaker, or for the 4 ohm resistor, it's 13 dB. On this one, we're going to um, use a 20 ohm, and if you go log of that 20 times that, it's about 26 dB. So let's hit this and see how it comes out. Wait, let me, uh, I'm going to degauss, you might saw a flicker up here. Up here you get to see the wave shapes, and down here you'll see um, the frequencies and the phases it goes along. Okay, so let's start running. Right here's the frequency, 20 hertz, and gain is 26, phase is minus 11, how it starts. So 
So this is set up for uh, 20 hertz. That's why it started here. The graph starts at 10 and it stops at 100k, but we're going to stop our, we're just sweeping from 20 hertz to 20k. But there's that 26 dB. It, it was a little high and it drops down on, on that graticule line right there. So it's right on 26 dB. And right here it turns up a little bit. So now, um, so this is kind of calibrating our setup. And this resistor is really pretty non inductive. There might be a little bit of inductance up here, but I think it's pretty non inductive at 20K. So here I, I put these measurements up. I can go to measure cursor on and I'll move cursor to right here's where it started to go up and you can see the cursor window here gain and phase for channel or cursor one and cursor two so right here the gain is still pretty flat the phase is about eight degrees nine degrees about 17 and so 10 K at 10 k it's about 17 degrees and it goes up to about 33.4 okay so uh, when we do our speaker we can we can keep this in mind because we're going to subtract this from we're going to know that our whatever we see on our next measurements is being pushed up by that much so we would subtract essentially subtract 33 degrees off of our other measurements and then on this end we'll add about 17 and a half degrees all right so now let's do the speaker all right I'm set up to do the speaker now when I uh, I got to go back here and then I'll run this here let me zoom in on the screen all right so let's do the speaker and I'm gonna increase this points per decade because I expect I don't think we're gonna need to go to 90 let's go to 45 we're doing 15 but I think we ought to go to 45 uh, points per decade because I suspect the speaker response is going to have a little bit more interesting curves in it. So let's get a little bit more detail. Alright, so here we go. FR run. And we'll be able to hear it, so I'll keep quiet. Okay, I think I woke up my dogs with that one. <laughs> um, geez. Okay, so the gain, look at this thing all over the place. Now actually through here it's not too bad, but wow, look at the rest of this stuff. Let's get the cursors up. Okay, let's get the cursors turned on. And okay, so two is sitting out here. Um, you know what, let's, let's just see what it did. Um, down here on this low point, it looks like 
at 19.6, 25 up here, and let's see how high that peak is. It goes up to 30, then drops down at 15.2. That looks like 25.2, and then right, right through here, it's about 17. 15.6, you know, it's right through here is fairly flat. That's 19.47 right there. So, you know what? Let me put this at the low one, I think. Let's put this right here. And then let's get cursor one and go to the high point, that peak. Those are kind of the worst case. Yeah. Okay. So. It was up to the highest 30.8 it looks like and as low as 15.2. Um, 20, but okay, look at this phase. Um, if you look at the gain here, it's, as, that, as the frequency goes up, the, it's dropping. So that is indicative of a capacitive uh, nature, you know, like, and then it kind of flat flattens out that's kind of resistive and then it goes up and that's inductive but where capacitive and inductive um, meet is a resonance but it's really flat so it it's like it's really dampened with the resistance of the speaker wire probably um, or crossover I'm not sure and then it comes up pretty sharp and it drops sharp. So that's pretty sharp resonance right there. That happened at 70 hertz. And then it drops and kind of like this, it's dampened uh, by resistance before it goes inductive again. And that happened at about 160 hertz. Then out here around, let's see, two, three, four, five, around six, uh, 600 hertz. It had another resonance, so there's like one, one, two, three, four resonant points, and then another one here. Now you notice how it kind of looked a little jaggedy. It looked like I think there's a pole here, you know, a pole here and a zero here. It's like it's moving up and then down, and then it kind of wiggles like that. So I think there's some pretty complicated filtering going on right through here. I think. From my guess is they were trying to make it flat through this section. As a center speaker, they're probably more interested in these frequencies for the center, I'm guessing. I don't know. Or maybe they're bumping it up through here, a little amplification through there. Yeah, there, uh, this speaker definitely has some characteristics to it. And it's, it's uh, noted as a... Um, 8 ohm typical speaker. Alright guys, was not as flat as resistor, right? Wasn't, wasn't quite as flat as resistor, but I think for a center channel from that frequency band that it was probably intended for, um, not too bad. But there you go, that's how you measure the impedance of your speaker. Now what would be cool if you guys can measure the impedance of your speakers and let's share that information. It'd be cool to have kind of a database when we're testing these amplifiers and we're hearing how people talk about certain, you know, speakers um, that have names out there. You know, some of the Eclipse speakers and some of the other ones. There's a bunch of them out there um, that some people talk about how a certain, you need a certain amplifier to drive it. We need to see the impedance of those speakers to start putting the science behind why you hear things a certain way. Okay. So it's not all just magic, and we can actually kind of know what we're gonna get when we go buy an amplifier or buy a speaker. All right, hey, thanks guys, thanks for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like that, okay?